It's your girl, Melanie Charles, a.k.a. D. Flower. And your girl, Uni Mojica, a.k.a. Uni Mo. Yes, and you are listening to the Make Jazz Chill again. How you feeling today, Uni? It's good to see you. I'm feeling good today. I can't complain, even though I usually always can't complain. So I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm all right. I could be complaining as well, but today in my um, morning pages, you know, I got to update you guys every time we do an episode about how I've been doing with my morning pages. This morning, towards the end, I said, I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to choose the joke. So when something could be stressing me out or whatever, it could go left, but I'm going to choose to find a joke. Okay. So with that in mind, I'm doing all right. So so when you say choose the joke, do you mean... Find the funny in it? Find the funny in it. Mm. You know mm. what I mean? Because, like, there's so much crap going on in this life, you know? Oh. Like, I, I just feel my health dwindling and all the stuff, like, the darker and darker things go in life. So I'm like, okay, halt. Let's try to reverse. So, yeah. Yep. But w- once again, I, I feel bad for the listeners because they don't get to see you. You got a cute little haircut. You looking like a Black Panther. I got, right yes. Now. That is what's up with me right now. My Thea, yes. I went up to Washington Heights and my Thea gave me a little haircut and she gave me highlights. So I'm, I'm, I'm a new person today. <laughs> you look very cute. And thank you. Yes. And I will thank say we're coming, eyes. we are coming up, the, <laughs> up off the heels off of our last gig. You played at the Blue Note. Monday, I played at Public Records on Saturday, and you're going to be at the Blue Note again on Monday, April 1st. Yes, I will be. I'm really excited. Thank you for that reminder, Uni. Um, Monday was really cool. We had a pretty good turnout. Um, it's looking like even the turnout for April 1st is going to be even better. So mm-hmm. um, I don't know when you guys are listening to this, but if it's before April 1st, I recommend that you get the tickets. And I'm really proud of, of, of myself and my amazing band. We were really locked in and we sounded really good. Yes. Um, you know, I'm such a big critic. So in the moment, I was just like, oh, I don't know. But the next day when I had a chance to listen and watch the videos, I was like, okay, we did good. And people really had some warm feedback and seemed to enjoy enjoy themselves um our friend stretch armstrong pulled up that was so nice he came with his lady oh my gosh i love stretch hopefully one day he can be on our podcast well i talked (laughs) to him about it and he was like absolutely yes he was like just let me know when you want to do it he was like duh like he made me feel crazy for asking he was like of course obvi and i was like oh my god (laughs) not that but he doesn't get he doesn't do that for everybody so of course come on yeah, I don't know what I did to be on in his good graces, but I'm just grateful um, that we, we're, beca- we're developing a really beautiful friendship. So shout out to Stretch Armstrong. You should ask, How- you should low key ask him to write your liner notes for your next record. Ooh, that's a bar because at that point, at this point, he's seen me like play like three times. Like he like really like kind of knows what I'm about right now. Mm-hmm. That's a really good Come on, you on know air. What the ideas. <laughs> you know, I know, right? <laughs> ideas. But how, how was public records? I wish I could have oh, been there. Man, it was a vibe. This time we played in the atrium. We're usually in the sound room, and nice. we were kind of like on the fence about it because it's a, it's tighter, you know. But we we roll with the punches, and regardless, nice. we had a really great set. People were there dancing. People were Great. screaming, screaming in our faces. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Chanel Listen. sounded amazing, of course. Oh, Chanel. We love Chanel. And we were all locked in, just like y'all were at the Blue Note. So it was it was great. Listen, That's I've right. had some great nights with you guys at Public Records. Like, the evening that you guys have curated is really one of a kind. So, I mean, I feel like everyone knows because it's always packed to the brim but if you're the one person listening that's not hip make sure you pull up to public records um the nights that um unimo and the whole crew the whole gang is rocking sonic messengers was bro there was ace mo there he was he was oh, rocking it. Nice. our next thing is we really want to get dancers like real dancers to be in the room so mm, if y'all know any dope. dancers send them yeah. my way please Yes, please. <laughs> um, what's going on? Well, you know what? 
Without I further don't... ado. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Set it up, you know, Set it up. Without further ado, you know, we could go on into our usual, you know, sports segment, trail tracks, da 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 like we always do. But today, we got a special guest in the house, the homie, the friend, but the band leader, the musician, the drummer, the educator, the arranger, hailing for all the way from Cleveland, Illinois, but, Ooh. you know, here in New York, doing Ooh. the damn thing. Give it up for Jerome Jenny. <laughs> y'all crazy. AJ. I love what? y'all. Welcome to our podcast, Jerome. You know, you need, <laughs> I got to tell you, I'm, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, I said Illinois. <laughs> it's the Midwest. It's the Midwest. Listen, I'm very I'm, East Coast. What can I say? Uh, I got to go back to school. <laughs> Yeah, for us, the Midwest and the South and all of that, it's all the same thing. It's all it's, it's, it's Cleveland, a. Illinois. <laughs> it's all good. I'm sure it's a Cleveland, Illinois. How you feeling tonight, Jerome? I'm feeling good. I feel real good. I mean, to be in y'all presence, I I feel blessed that y'all even you know asked me to be here because I'm I'm fan I'm a fan of both of y'all so. Of course. I mean, well, of course, well, I mean, of course that we would invite you to be with us. I, you know, my personal Jerome Jennings story, it starts like how many years ago, Jay? Like 10? It's 12? More, it's more than 10. It, it, it has to be f- at least 15. At least. Oh my. I don't know how like we linked though. I just feel like I just remember r- magically you were in my life. Um, and early on when we linked up, you you blessed me with laying down some drums on some of my first recordings. And you've just been such an amazing big brother to me throughout the years. You you done blew up and got even more, you know, in demand. So I can't be calling you to play with you mm. like I like I used to when we when I first had met you. But whenever we <laughs> cough, get cough, together, color purple. Right. You <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I, I was trying to save it, but y'all <laughs> Jennings had a beautiful role in Color Purple. I'm sitting in the movie theater and I'm like, oh my God. Yes, same. I was like, oh, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, you just do all, you do all the things and you do them all really well. Mm-hmm. And like, you're one of the best drummers alive. Very humble. And I think it's, it's a great opportunity to like dive into you behind the drums, behind the hip hop, behind the jazz, behind the production, behind the voiceover, behind the acting. Like we I'm really excited to like get closer to who you are, Jay. Get a little closer. Yeah. There's a lot of people a lot that people don't know about you. People just think, oh Jerome just play drums. Oh, you know, he's he's teaches at Juilliard or or this or that university. But before we even got on here, you said that you do voiceovers. Yes, I've and done a bit of that. How did you get into that? Well, playing with Paula West. I, uh, there's a oh. singer out in in San Francisco who I've been performing with. I've been accompanying for fifteen years now, actually. Um, you know, and. She is on that scene of, you know, there's a there was a a fan of hers who was in the voiceovers, who 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 was into it, like was making a living. And she 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 would come to the shows and she recommended that I look into wow. it. She heard my voice and was like, I think you could you could do voiceover. So um a, another friend of mine in, in New York. Um, she was into. Uh, she worked in a in a voiceover office, like like uh, I should say, a, a, a audio book office, like what? downtown, like the like that. Yeah, um, can't quite remember her name. I I, I gotta say her name, but I can't. that's okay. She, she doesn't live here anymore. She she moved back to Seattle. Um, but we were friends, and she was like, you know what? I think you could be. You could record 
our in our griot section of of the book of the voiceover of of the book like the the audio book and this is like when audio books were like new yeah, like brand new wow. it wasn't really a thing so mm. i went there and i i did some reading <laughs> and these <laughs> these books were like romance black romance books were you uncomfortable <laughs> I gotta admit, when when you do when when you when you get into this voiceover thing, it it really brings out every nuance of your voice, mm. every nuance. And I realize how country I sound when I talk. <laughs> and oh, I realize, wow. yeah, yeah. I mean, you everything. Didn't know? All of, <laughs> <laughs> says the says the New Yorker, <laughs> a Brooklynite. <laughs> you know. And that that kind of started me, you know, getting into that. And and I was getting at it. I didn't work work at work towards it. This is an art. It's an art mm -hmm, to do yeah. it. But I got yeah. called for some other stuff. You know, um, Trevor. Um, what's Trevor's last name? He works. He used to work at BGO. Oh, um, Smith. Trevor Smith. He called me for some stuff. I did a a, a reading. A Malcolm X. Um, Ex excerpts from his book, from his oh, autobiography, wow. playing Malcolm X. So I had to get into his, the, the, the dialect, the, the dialect and his, and his, the rhythm of his voice. That mm. was fun. Um, wow. And, and, you know, that, that, that's how I got into that. That's how I, you know, got into that side of things. It's interesting because I feel like drummers um, that play, there's like different schools of artists and musicians, um, I believe. I feel like there are technicians, um, musicians <clears throat> who can, you can call them and you know they're going to deliver and they're going to play what you need them to play. They're going to play beyond what you imagine you need them to do. You know, they're going to just show up on time. They're going to do the gig. And we can list names of musicians like that that really keep the tradition going. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and then you have artists who maybe you can't call them for everything, but like what they do bring is truly one of a kind and you know you can't get it anywhere and you know you select them for really well curated things. Um, I think that like you kind of embody both of those things because usually the, t the really great technician doesn't expand artfully as much as you do, you know, like you've made space even beyond being an incredible drummer, a, a go-to on-call drummer for all the top people. You've also like opened up yourself to doing the voiceover stuff, to doing production stuff. Um, and I would love, because we had Christian McBride on the show uh, last year, and we really love talking about his discography. Like I, I'm a McBride's Dan, so I would love to hear from you, Jay. Like, what was your experience working with him? And I feel like y'all recorded what two albums? Yeah, um, we've recorded a set. Um, we he recorded on both of my albums. Um, I recorded with him. Um, he produced a record for Philip Bailey, and I'm mm. on that. Wow. Okay. Um, that one. He also produced a recording for the National African American Museum in 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 DC. I'm on that as well. Wow. Um, that was filmed too, right? <clears throat> was that yeah, filmed? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yep. And was 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 interesting. I met him acting. I met Christian McBride. <laughs> Acting in an off Broadway play what? called Lady really? Day. Really? <laughs> oh, Lady Day. What year was that? You would say, if like, roughly. I would say, I would say that was probably two two thousand twelve, maybe maybe fourteen, thirteen. Wow. When did you move to New York? I moved to New York in two thousand two, y'all. And you, wow. it, it took that long for you to meet him? That's so strange. No, I met him. I met him. I, oh, I met him before. I, like, y'all got to know. I'm, okay. I'm, <laughs> I stay under the radar. Like, I, I'll go to a show, especially when I first moved out here. I've always, I've always rolled 
dolo, man. I always rode by myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would go to a show, see see what's happening, and just leave. I wasn't I wouldn't be up in up in people's face. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. That wasn't that wasn't that wasn't my thing. And I and I hold uh, like a, a cat like Christian McBride. Christian is a, is such a juggernaut of this yeah. music, and 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 has and has shaken the move for so long. I just want to hear him be like, damn, take that in, go back and realize how the level that I want to be on or the level that I want to at least attain to. And um, I just split. Um, the first time, I, I saw him play three times. The third time I saw him play was with Chick Korea, And um, uh, yeah, it was a trio with, with, with Brian Blade. And I saw, I saw the show. If I did approach somebody, I would just say, hey, I, I, I enjoyed the show. My name is Jerome. Be out. Right. Mm -hmm. Not, hey, I play too, man. Nah. Like, let's get up and play, man. <laughs> nah. <laughs> that ain't me. Yeah. More and more I have ideas about how maybe that's not necessarily the best thing. But, you know, sometimes when you're hungry, you figure, let me shoot my shot. But yeah. I respect your way of being like, nah, I just, I'm just here to receive the blessings. I don't need to impose myself. But so you're saying that y'all met on the film set? No, nah, it so, wasn't. It wasn't a film. It was. On the it theater, was. The theater. Yeah, it was at the theater. So <laughs> I um, I didn't mean to cut you off. Was you about to ask a question? Well, no, I was just gonna say like you guys weren't playing, or were you, or did you, or were y'all just jamming out anyway? Because y'all had instruments there. I'm I'm saying, did y'all connect? Because he heard you play, or was it just y'all community? You, you guys connected first on a human level, and then it was like the music came next. So, I used to I used to accompany his his wife, uh, Melissa mm -hmm. Walker, Melissa, yeah, yeah. and we used to have rehearsals and whatnot at at, at their crib, but it had nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with him, but. We 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 share same likes and interests, but musically how it connected, how he got interested. Um, I was in this play with Dee Dee Bridgewater. It was called Lady Day. Um, it only ran for like eight months, and Dee Dee did a lot of the heavy lifting. But I had a lot of I had some speaking roles, and I, and I was playing as well. I played this this role called uh, the guy dude name was Kelvin McBride. Anyways. Um, McBride came to one of the shows and he was like I like the way you accompanying her and I was like alright I, you know, I appreciate it you know and um, he was going through some changes in his trio some years later maybe maybe a year two maybe a year and a half later um, and he, he called me or uh, you know, and he he wanted to try. He wanted to try me out. He was like, "Man, I'm 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 calling you because the way you accompany a singer, I think it'll work for this trio." I said, "All right, that's cool. Let's go." He had been trying drummers out, and and then I ended up being in the band for like two and a half years. Wow. Yeah. Now he's like he's like my big brother. Like, I love that dude. Straight up. Wow. You never know who's listening. Like you might think you you going for one gig, but you want a whole other gig, and then the person sees a vision and says, "Ah, you would be great for this other thing." So we always got to stay positive and always bring our A game. You never know when the pivot will happen. That's real. Mm -hmm. so That's true. real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so true. One one thing that I've I've always noticed when we when we've worked together in situations with, in terms of like education. Um, and you have been in so many different roles in terms of being an educator, worked in various different institutions and things like that. And I wanted to, to kind of get your perspective on the, the positive things that you've taken away from jazz education in particular where whether it's mentorship or in a school or whatever said or on the bandstand and what are the positive things and then also some of the I don't want to say negative things but things that could 
potentially I guess what are what are, in your opinions what are the flaws that you that you think our jazz education system is? What you want me to start with? You could go positive, <laughs> you could go negative. Let's go with po- let's go with positive <laughs> first. Let's go with positive first. <laughs> um I think anytime something that that's that's good that's been a a positive like attribute to to our society is is taught or at least recognized i think it's a good thing um i think uh oh like knowing who Thelonious monk is yeah just just speaking his name mm-hmm. like when you say people's name like you know D Flower, you feel me? Like Melanie Charles. Even if they get it wrong, at least somebody gonna be like Googling or looking looking her up. Uh, you Unimo, you know what I'm saying? Unimo. Like at least you have a a, a fifty percent chance. Hopefully, this person will go and do their own research and figure some things out. Um, I think that's a good thing. I think. Um, just speaking these people's name is a good yeah. thing. Um, there's certain qualities that you can learn through learning this music, and certain things you can learn about. <sighs> Unfortunately, I think I think there's a lot. There's there's a few um, f- flaws. Um, when you have folks teaching this music and teaching these artists that don't understand or come from a cultural contextualization, they don't really understand the culture that the music comes from. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about the culture, I'm not talking about music notes necessarily, though it goes hand in hand. I'm talking about how do you contort yourself? How do you, what, 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 what do you, how do you move in the space culturally in the space from of, of 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 if if you from where where the people who created this music come from like if i if i'm studying for instance um my little brother he's 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 been taking taekwondo lessons for a, a very long time now oh, wow. like at least four mm-hmm. years, four or five years. He's a black belt. He's bad. He's 11. <laughs> but he's not just learning how to kick. He's not just learning how to punch or defend himself. He's learning about co- Korean culture. How do, how do they get down? How do, you, how do you move in those spaces? Um, why is it necessary for this art form to, to, to emerge when it did? He's learning how they talk to each other. How how do they treat their elders? Like how how you know he's learning a lot out that 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 embodies the culture. Understanding that the art is like a branch, but the root, like in the root of the actual of, of the of the of the culture. It's just a it's just a it's just a little piece that mm. makes. The whole and and sometimes I think lear- when people learn this music, you know, the swing the, the the swing tradition of our music, they learn the goodies, but they don't they don't they they one don't really respect the people who it comes from. They don't. Right. The people who they're teaching are honorary, like white folks, almost in a sense. Or or honorary high class, but the neighborhoods and 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 the energy that the music comes from, or that is retained, they don't accept it the same way they accept the Lester Young, or mm-hmm. or, or or a John Coltrane, like a right? gentrification of yeah, it's, um, it's 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 wild and and. Dark. And and when that happens, when you're not culturally contextualizing what you're teaching, it gets it gets taught 
in a distorted way. It comes back out in a distorted way. This is how we have people coming out of these colleges that know how to play their instrument, but they don't really hit you musically. Because mm-hmm. culturally, they, they could care less about the culture. They just want to learn how to play a John. Like, they want to learn how to play like somebody, or they, they want to be different for the sake of being different. But they don't... There's certain unsung rules that we have in our culture that's not even addressed in school. Y'all, y'all, y'all know what they are, they, but we take it for granted because we yeah. just know what it is. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. But I've but what do I I've been playing around with this idea a lot, um, Jerome, about like maybe it's the the issue is trying to squeeze something that's so vast in a college education, in a four-year program, six-year program. It's like it's impossible to really get down to the well, maybe it's not impossible. I guess the question should be how would we get down to those details? When you have to take some test that says you can do this key, these scales, these rhythms, and do it. like there's these like sometimes arbitrary like things that you have to jump to, uh, hoops you have to jump through in order to qualify you to get the check of a professional musician. Um, where is the room for the contextualization for the culture? There's room. I feel like, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Um, no, no question go ahead, was go for ahead, you. <laughs> no, 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 you need, go ahead, go ahead, go, go, go ahead. No, I, I feel like it's, it's the way the curriculum is built and the schedule of each semester, each class, each day, and being careful with leaving room for all of the elements and pillars of what, it, of what the music is, what it means uh, the history of the music and contextualized in said time period of of the music that you're studying, and then the other pillars that are also go along with it is just can business and understanding economics too. I think that also goes hand in hand, which is another side of the conversation, of course. But um, I. And taking out the unimportant pieces, like sometimes you have to take university courses depending on if you're in a conservatory or not, where that seem irrelevant. So, but I don't know. What are your thoughts, Jerome? I mean, this you got to understand these these institutions are bank funded, right? Right. Uh, sometimes state funded and sometimes they can get federal funds as well i mean this is or rich donors or rich donors right. so we so we gotta we gotta understand that yeah oh yeah you're taking a step further i was i was yeah, talking yeah. surface level of but we gotta go no we gotta go you always gotta, <laughs> gotta go, go to the that's root. where i wanted to go right the you, you <laughs> always gotta go to the root mm-hmm. and if you if you think about how these institutions the the, the institutions that fund the institutions right. think about Black folks. I mean, if Wells Fargo is 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 subsidizing a program, but Wells Fargo or or whatever bank, whatever bank, um, made a lot of money off of off of slave trade stocks. Well, that that you're gonna get some residual effects of of, of that. In the future, then you, I mean, right now. So you have to. We, we also have to understand. Blocked. Yeah, you got you. Also, yeah, I mean, you got to understand. I mean, if you you have a teaching style that's coming deeply out of the tradition of how we how we learn culturally, um, in the neighborhood, somebody will observe you and say, "Nah, we don't." You got to teach a different kind of way because they don't mm-hmm. understand the culture. Again, we're going back to not understanding the culture, not understanding. Or, or wanting to be thoughtful and, and, and get to understand or, or try to understand the people that, that we're the, who's coming out of the culture. If any of these schools made a sincere effort to make statements in 2020 about what was going on, then, you know, we, we we would have we would have something to talk about, but most of them did not. 
because they don't understand what was going on and nor do they want. I mean, but it's a contradiction. It, 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 it's a contradiction there. Um, another thing, again, you got to look at the root. Like if you think of David Maines, this is a guy who um, kind of, he, he, he started the new school, like the, that, like in, 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 the, in the early 1900s, I just did a, a panel on James Reese Europe. Him and James Reese Europe were friends. James Reese Europe and his and his band were the first to play black um black group, the Clef Club Orchestra, to play uh at Carnegie Hall in 1912. Now he had to get these these brothers ready to play. So they had rehearsals, and the way that he rehearsed was very different than the way an orchestra would rehearse. Mm -hmm. And David Maines was like, Mans was like, I don't think y'all gonna be able to pull this together. Cause he didn't understand the ways that he was rehearsing the band and James Reese Europe had to like to like pull him to the side. Like, yo, I got it. Chill, calm down. They going to be ready. And they killed it. They, I mean, it, standing O's, standing room only make a long story short. So like that misunderstanding of, of, of how we do things, how we get down. And, and black energy has always been a turnoff for people who don't understand where we're coming from. I'm talking to y'all. If somebody who's not from where we from heard me talking to y'all in this way, they say, he's, 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 he's quite aggressive. <laughs> right. Why is he so angry? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, but the thing is, you got to get to try to understand. You know, I heard this Chuck D interview on, 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 on Arsenio Hall show. He was like, if you don't respect the people who 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 are producing whatever art that you're coming out of, man, you gonna you, it's always gonna be a problem. You don't respect, or and respect is a is that's a hell of a word, man. That's an action. Love, respect, all those are action words. Yep. If you not if you're not trying to come to me, and that's another thing. These are these are mainly these are most white mostly white institutions. If m more than most ninety percent of those institutions. Are are uh, jazz uh, institutions are 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 headed directed by white artists mm -hmm. or people who Funded might not even white money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might not even be an artist, but you got that dr by in, in front of your name. You got that you got that doctor or PhD in front of your name. But what does that mean in the community? What does that mean in the black community? Who do we really? When it comes down to the art, right? Th does that even matter? Plus, let's talk about the hierarchy of 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 positions in 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 these institutions. You got the very you got you got the very bottom adjuncts. You got uh, associate professors. You got professorships. You got I and mean, then you have so many other um, hierarchical titles in between. What are most jazz musicians' titles when they work in these institutions? Adjunct. There is absolutely no job security in adjuncting. They can fire you after your contract without you even knowing. And most of these jazz musicians, not I'm not I'm not dissing adjunct work. If that's what you got and and, and you're and 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 it's servicing you, so be it. But there's no job security in that. It's very similar to writing music and somebody else stealing the publishing. If you have jobs, and then the the, cl the classical department will have four or five professors who are tenured, which you it's so it's hard to be fired when you have tenure. Most jazz departments don't really have tenured musicians in the department. Maybe one, maybe two. Maybe. Mm. Everybody else is adjunct. That shows you how much they respect the art form and the music. Y'all feel where I'm... Yep. I feel you, but I can't help but just to think that it's just the, the concept of learning jazz in a university setting just doesn't really make sense. Like after doing it, after getting my jazz degree, I, given it was an under, undergrad, I don't have a master's, I don't have a doctorate, so maybe it'd be different. Um, I think that the, the focus, okay, there's two parts, right? Because it's like the students and the information. And then it's also musicians developing a livelihood outside of 
performing on stage. Like when you talk about like adjunct and like getting like, let's say like a Reggie Workman or an OG that they can't be moving around like that. You know, I, I think it makes sense for them to be at a university and like sharing their wisdom and helping guide the other teachers how to do their thing for sure in that regard. But also I do know that a lot of jazz musicians take teaching gigs as just a way to like kind of make money. They kind of want to teach, but like it's a check. I'm sorry. Like that's a thing. And you you, do, you teach the few courses that you can and then you back on the road again. Can't wait to get back on the road. You got to go back and do your time to teach. Sure. You see some young musicians that are, that are really exciting and are developing and you might be invested in a few of them, but then the conversation becomes the importance of mentorship. And I feel like we all, aside from our school, our, our schooling, like like Jerome, I know you went to Juilliard, like top of the line for jazz education. I imagine though that you had some really hands-on mentors that really, I mean, I would like to think, oh, okay, well, what's the tea? What's the tea? How are you going to be in a situation where people are paid and forced to hang around you? For pay, and it's gonna come out sincere. Mm-hmm. The last thing, the, you know, a nightmare that I had was to was to go look school and the scene. It's two different things. Totally different. Let's thing. just let's just let's cut the the let's cut the the boo boo right and now. And I just want to add, we are also seeing the same thing slowly happen to hip hop too. Oh, don't get me started. Going in, getting into the institution. Don't get me started. Yep. Yep, and the yo, same things are happening. Yo. <laughs> the same thing is happening and it's going to happen. And it's it's yep. going to happen. And it's um, happening fast. Because because the energy that drove hip hop is the same exact energy that drove that drove jazz music or drove, you know, the, the swing biggest... of, of, of of, you know. I mean, I you can't, I always, you, when I went to Rutgers, Victor, Victor Lewis, I went because I wanted to get up under uh, Ralph Peterson. And Victor was there the second year. Um, I wanted to finish my degree because I told, I told, I like, you know, I got a mantra, a personal mantra. If I start something, I want to finish it. That's just what it is. Um, I never wanted my teachers to feel like they were forced to hang with me or forced to give me jewels of knowledge because they were at the gig or at a job. Mm -hmm. So I saw all my teachers outside of school. Because when you see a person like Reggie Workman, when you see a person like, I mean, these are juggernauts of this music, man. These are people who, who, they, they, Victor Lewis, you know, folks like, like, you see these people in these institutions, it's, it's, it's very comparable to me. And I, I know, no disrespect, okay? I'm going to use an analogy, but I, I don't mean it by any disrespect. Mm-hmm. It's the same concept as seeing a lion in the wild, saying, man, that's beautiful, that's majestic, majestic, it's powerful. It's something that God put on this planet, and I'm in awe of it. And then saying, but I want to cage it up and see it yeah. whenever I get ready. Pay admit, admission and see it whenever I get ready to see it. And study and, it. And, and, and study it. And if it gets out of line, I'll just put it down and get another one. Mm. If, it, if, it, if it bites Whew. back, if it bites back, even though it's not in its natural habitat, I'm going to, I'm, 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 I got something for it. Whether it's a pride, whether it's a chain around his his ankle, I'm going to show this thing. I'm going to show this majestic creature, this majestic God creation that I'm better than it and it better get in line. So when you see these jazz musicians trying to teach a small group, an, an ensemble of people who they might not even fuck with if if they weren't assigned the the 11 o'clock ensemble. Right. Mm. 
they got to <laughs> do what they got to do or or they or they got to go so this music has been this music has been appropriated it's been institutionalized in their institutions and it's going to it's going to it, and that, when that happens it's going to be it's going to be taught in a distorted way it's going to have to be or you're going to you're going to have to go it has to be that's the only way that the machine can keep moving it has to be <clears throat> so it, it, but so i feel kind of torn because like i said i appreciate what it means for musicians livelihood who 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 cannot tour or record or for whatever reason or do not want to or are working on other things but in terms of like if I had kids I wouldn't send them to jazz school I would say go shed with Uncle Jerome go link up with you I'd rather pay that money to said musician you know what I mean? And really get the, the the information straight from the lion's mouth, you know, to continue the the the, the analogy that you made. But I, I just feel like I don't know, like the, the 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 jazz school, the institution thing just really seems really like not right in my spirit. The the, the more and more time goes, you the know. More time that it goes is by. you I, know I, mean, I am just thankful that I was able to go through Jack McLean's in, um program. Because that was very much different. He, that program was very rooted in the history, rooted in where the music came from, rooted in uh, focusing on slavery and the transatlantic slave trade and Africa and all the way to the beginning of time to Pangea. So that I am thankful for that. But that doesn't that is like almost in a cycle of where that is that even that program is no longer going to exist that that program is different now yeah it's and yeah. it's 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 a class it's a class thing too mm-hmm. um th- those these programs aren't designed for people who come from cleveland who come from you know parts of hartford <laughs> who come from parts of brooklyn to be able to 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 be there and feel at home to feel at home right right because again there's this dis- there's this cultural disconnect where so many people who who are interested in going to Juilliard a lot of those students want to go because their parents are like okay you want to play music play music and here, go to the here, best school that here's, has it. Here's your man. Here's your New York University mm-hmm. application. Here's your Juilliard application. Here's your Columbia application. Because I don't. They 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 don't quite understand how this thing works. You, you yeah. school is it it it's different. It's a different thing. But now coming out of school, I mean, at this point, you're paying so much money to go. Folks want to come out of school and and. They 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 want to be playing, they and they want to get be playing with yeah, names. I mean, I've even I've even spoken to students that are in some of these programs now, where they get in trouble for taking a gig during class time when the whole point That's of crazy. being at the school oh, is man. so that you can play the gig. That's real. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but I had to, you know, credit. I had to say no. I had to say no to a lot of gigs because I knew I wanted to finish. And and for what it's worth, I mean, I I learned a lot. I learned I learned a lot. Um, there was some heavy folks at, at, at Juilliard when I was there, and I I learned a lot. I mean, I, I'm a person. If I'm in any environment, I can take. My mom used to say, "You got to learn how to sift. You got to sift and take what you mm-hmm. can to keep it moving." But I always made sure I was out in these streets. I was out in mm-hmm. these streets going to sessions. I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I think about being self-driven. I used to think that like everyone, everyone should or can play Black American music and like you, everyone can sing. Everyone can. Uh, Now I believe you got to have the drive and the hunger and you have to seek out the information and the knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like two prong, like, Yes, mentorship, school, education, yes. But you have to have a hunger and you need to follow that hunger. And another thing that comes to mind, though, is like we're talking about mentorship and we look at, we're talking about our OGs. But I think at this point, even people in our generation, we need to start taking responsibility 
for looking out for the young ones coming up Mm -hmm. because I remember when I was coming up at the new school a lot of the 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 older classmen you know musicians that were more ahead that were doing things they were so stingy with the information (laughs) they were they didn't want to share I'm not going to name her name but I had a teacher at a certain time and I wanted to understand how to like scat in the changes like I was like how do I like really like get in there and she responded oh you got it don't worry about it you got it like just like not being willing to to share, not taking the time to really process what that question means and giving me the tools. I just feel like it, there wasn't a generosity with the information. So we are in that place already, y'all, mm-hmm. where if we see, you know, that this young kid coming up trying to that they're hungry, they showing up to the gig, give them a little bit of extra because we already know they're not getting it in school. Well, I mean, like what you said, though, like. I'm focusing in on, like, hungry, coming out to the gigs. Yo, I don't show everybody everything, man, because, you know, you, right. you, don't, you, don't, you don't get it. You don't get everything. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Like, there's a, no. there's a bit of trial and error you got to deal with. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's such a, I don't know, man. It's like, it's such a corporate type of way a lot of these, a lot of, a lot of people move now. It's like they see it as, like, um, how do you get a gig? They 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 go to these they go to these like kind of questions that's like I don't know, man. It's like it's Not like steeped in corporate and yeah. corporate in a in a corporate kind of cookie cutter way of 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 thinking. Would you say? Would it be safe to say that it's? Do you think that it's influenced by the way social media is? Do you think it has anything to do with that, or is it I mean, just kind of? It's, it's our times. The nature of. No, it's, it's, our, our it's our times. It's the times, man. Like a lot of people, they're they're getting they're getting information through schools. The first thing people ask you now, what school do you go to? I, I've seen people, you know. Again, my my whole thing is observing. So I go to a spot, chill, and just see how people move. You hear people ask the question, "What school do you go to?" Or 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 you know, I don't really like saying community. As much as I used to. Yeah, I agree. And it feels like everything is so cookie cutter for just, just the jazz world. And it's not even remotely close to what the entire musical world is. It's a corporation. See, see, in, in, in jazz music right now, you can make, you can make decent money in different, in different arenas, in different areas. Right. Um, if you're playing a lot with certain groups, you can do okay. Mm-hmm. There's teaching opportunities. There's there's like, it's known that grants can be written if you if you experimental and and it's jazz tinge. It's already it's official. Louis Armstrong was 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 a genius. People already people see these 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 jazz illuminaries as as great. I mean, Lincoln Center. You know what's money up there, Uni. You know what's happening. Yep. So people, and, and that's and that's a very corporate model for this music. It's a very, but it is a very. But mm-hmm. but everything that we've created has been anti-establishment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Including yeah. this music, it's it was anti-establishment. But I, I'm starting to feel that in order, and I, this is so twisted, I feel like in order to preserve the culture, right, because there is an importance to that, is fine. If that means that we're walk, that there is a space for um, the museum, the jazz museum, right, like like the Carnegie Hall, like they're, they're playing Mozart, and this is how you play Mozart. I do think that, you know what? That there should be a space where this is this is how you do train. This is how. Well, let, let's say let's go a little bit not not train, but let's who, like um, help me out. Like this is Jackie McLean. This is this is like this is how you do. This is the school of this. Let's say I think that there there is an importance to that because I do believe that we will yeah, lose it. But here's the problem: who's doing the programming? Who's who's in those power positions? Come on, Melanie, you put an album out a few years ago, right, man? I mean, but like most of your stuff is next level to me. You put an album out that took the tradition 
and just did this to it. And like move like like I thought about like when I think about what you're doing, and you need to, you too. Y'all are taking this tradition and it's like you're using it like Play-Doh. Mm. And you and and and, it, and and your work, I mean, from the title of your record, let's just let's just start there and then get into the the actual music. Y'all don't love black women, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's real talk. Like, and it's true, it's facts. And that is in the lineage. Every Let's, every ounce and drop of music in that record is direct lineage of of the music. It's that in is there. not just jazz, or it's where they try to confine and say just jazz. Like, I understand no one, why Nicholas Payton says, "Bam," and right. I begin. The more we have these conversations, the more I understand it. Because in order for anything to change, we have to break the mold we have to break the challenge and break the institution because because when when we get to the root of it it is the where the money is where the 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 racism exists and it always comes back to economics and racism and history no doubt yeah I mean, I feel like the project that I did like I went I did my I went on my own journey like no one like told me to do this. I didn't see someone do it. And I went that Truth. path. It was my very often very painful, often very lonely journey that I don't necessarily would wish upon another vocalist. I'm like, sis, if you can go do really well in Juilliard and be the best scatter at Juilliard, then sis, go ahead and do that and make your money. That's where I stand. Or you can go down the dark side like I went. I, I, dare, I don't want you to go. But if you want to go, let's go. I feel like there's space for both. I feel like there's importance for both. For in in both of those those approaches, and you know I, what I mean. I, you know what? You know what? I'm a uh, no. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't because because there's there's some rules to this. There's some rules to black culture. I'm gonna give okay. Mm-hmm. There's I'm, rules to this. Let's go. Let me, let me take down the notes. <laughs> and one of the rules is no biting. You're not supposed to be biting what somebody else did and get attention mm, period and when you do that and get attention it lets people in who don't belong i had i taught a class at lincoln center a swing you class and i had this dude talk this lady was talking it was a, it was they, they were cool people in the class except for one person not this lady but she asked she was okay she was cool she asked she said I'm hearing uh Emmett Cohen playing uh uh he's 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 doing a lot of Willie the Lion Smith, you know, and he's hipping audiences to Willie the Lion Smith and he's playing things the way Willie the Lion Smith played, and I'm I appreciate that and whatnot. I said, all right. Anytime somebody is taking a music, playing a music that had its height in popularity or its beginnings 50 years ago, 40 years ago, whatever. If you put that person in a time machine and they landed 50 years ago, if the people who were creating that music ain't fucking with that person, they, ain't, they shouldn't get fucked with in the, in, in, at the time that they are currently living in. Melanie, you took standards and and just and just reworked them in a way that was like I never even heard this before. I never even heard phasers and and phasing and and and, and different soundscapes to this music. Dim their eyes, I think. What what did you do? What uh you didn't did so much music. Oh you you muted. I muted myself. I'm trying to make sure I listen to you real good. Um, I did Jazz Ain't Another Soul. I did, um, yeah. Um, See, you done moved on out. to something else <laughs> already. See, but that's what you're supposed to do. Because I'm dark and I'm skeptical, and I and I'm this 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 world hasn't been kind to me. So I'm I'm not the right person. But check to it out. But check it out. <laughs> Real talk. Those are dark. unsung rules. When you get a person like Elu, when you get a person right. like Christian McBride, yes, even you know. 
I'm going to say this, man. W- Winton has his own sound. Yes, he does. If you don't, mm-hmm. you don't, you don't have to, you don't, I'm not, we're not talking about whether you like it or not. Right. We're talking about uh, 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 Roy Hargrove. We're talking yep. about yes. you have your own thing and you're presenting it to the world, whether they like it or not. Now, it's clear that these people are coming through a, a, a certain tradition. Which, yeah. which people can, you know, have something to write about. My wife is a writer, so she's like, people have to have something to write about, which, mm. which I, I, I dig it. But the folks who are running the show, the folks who are in control, and I can, I mean, I mean and there's a, and there's a, there's a, unfortunately, a, a cultural and historical context, more so con- historical contextualization to that too. They are controlling the narrative and in, 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 in trying to shape how we see 2024 in 2050. Mm-hmm, and it's not mm-hmm. fair. But the mm-hmm. fact that y'all are still recording, the fact that people are still shaking and trying to do things that is, is, is abstract. Yeah. But coming through the Black experience and speaking to today, what's happening today. Yeah. Not what's yeah. happening. Mm-hmm. Man. Willie the Lion Smith was was talking about and speaking to what was happening in 1930, 1940. He's yeah. what was happening then in the black community, in disenfranchised communities, it's not quite the same as it is. We have to address what's happening now, even yeah. though we're showing admiration for what came before us. We we gotta yeah. respect our elders. Yeah. Yes. Yep. But we cannot come exactly how our elders came. Same. Yeah. You can't yeah. do it, even if you try. You can't. you can't. And that is what's being perpetuated. That's what's that being what perpetuated. Being Learn what they did. Understand the temperature of the culture is is probably maybe even more important than learning what they did. Right, right. I, I'm a huge believer in that. It's really understanding the culture. What was going on at the time? What's going on really? at the time, man? I'm trying to yes. teach these students. I just came from my history class at Context. At, at, you have MSU. to put context to the music. You got to put context to what's going on or what's going to happen is people are going to learn it in a very distorted way. It's going to come out like a a, a, a gremlin. And, and no, you're going to be And you're not going to be it. connected. It's not even going to be connected to your own heartstrings. When no, you listen to music and you talk to a, a musician, you want to know what was your inspiration? What was, what in, what brought you to write these lyrics? Why? The why, it's, where's it's, the why? It's crazy. Somebody mm-hmm. just re- somebody recorded a few years ago, kind of blue, just like how they did it, and it actually got ink. People was writing about that. You got you got somebody saying, uh, 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 what they say, f, uh, uh, uh Wayne Shorter. Oh, and God, it actually, I remember that. It, it actually got ink. How did th- how does that get ink? Why are people even caring that somebody is mm-hmm. redoing? kind of blue yeah. because the person writing doesn't understand the culture yeah they don't yeah that should be ignored it's also really lazy um there's a gentleman who i'm not gonna say his name a peer of ours um who put out an album about two years ago a cover album of another artist that's alive right now who's very hip and cool and we love her and he did an album and is the same exact arrangements and and, and i'm so upset that he did that um, because this musician has so much potential, but he literally did not rearrange, did not reimagine, didn't do anything. It, it sounds like a karaoke. Oh. And we need to hold each other accountable, too, because this is a peer of ours. And I think a lot of people whisper quietly, but like, and we watch people do that because it's like this album was a great album in the 90s, in the 80s. So if I reimagine this album, I can ride on the wave of how good this music is. Is it on a label? It's actually really lazy. Um, he, he has his own label. It's, he, oh, it's mm-hmm. on his label. See, I mean, he's trying to mm-hmm. see, but the thing is, again, this is, you know, I, mm-hmm. I wanted to get into this in this James Reese Europe, um, po- um, not podcast, um, a uh, panel. Idea. We, we, as long as we try to see, envision our lives through somebody else's gaze, we're always going to come up, um, corny. Yeah. Cor- corny uh, or, or, or culturally, artistically short. Mm-hmm. What we're trying to do is we're trying to we're trying to see our lives through the eye, the bluest eye, and wow. when you do that, you can be successful doing that. Yeah, you can be yeah. successful monetarily, 
popularly, pop, mm-hmm. popular. You can be become popular, but what does it mean in the in the long run? Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting an album out called Solidarity. I'm trying to speak to 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 what's happening in the community, black women at the time. You know what's happening. It's you know what's going on culturally. You, you know. tell you mentioned your album, and I I did want to like pivot a little bit talking about like production because you are also a beat head. You're a producer. <laughs> um, you create your own wor- worlds sonically, um, and I know we we want to go to tr- trivia soon. But there's something I wrote down, and I wanted to run it by you and see what you think about this concept. I wrote um, the evolution of Black American music is the extraction of elements. The evolution of Black American music is the extraction of elements. That's what I believe. And as I've been looking and seeing and hearing where sound is now, um, what does that mean to you? What do you take from that? Can you like, what you think about that idea? Y'all the embodiment of that statement. I mean, you. Our music has always been a amalgamation of 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 several styles coming from various cultures. And I feel like that's what makes it what it is. But when I say the extraction of elements, I mean, as time goes by, as we evolve as a society, Black American music, we're removing things. Like, for like, let's say when we talk about vocal production, I'm noticing now we're not using reverb like we used to use it. Now it's like more dry and more like right there to your ear. You know what I mean? Mm. That's what I mean when I say the extraction of elements. I feel like with time, we're like taking away stuff. Do you do you agree with that observation? You mean you mean taking away like like sonically uh, instruments sonically, or... at, sonically arrangement wise? You know what I mean? Like simplicity and form, even like going from bebop to like what came. You know what I mean? Like we're just like taking Stripping out away. Stripping away, and like with time, like it's less and less and less and less and less. And I think it's kind of a good thing. Um, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I feel like whatever's coming is gonna is going it's gonna be a response to what's happening socially, right? And a lot of saturation. I mean, if you are, are, are we are we talking about? going from big band to now? Sure. That's part of it. Going from big band to now. Um, I mean... Simpler forms in the music, like cats ain't doing... Oh, you're talking about like, 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 like vamps and different... Yeah. That, like all of this is is, is all happening with time. We see it. Or even in pop music too. From like like train changes is like... That's right. see that. You don't. Well, I mean, hear that, like, I mean, but again, again, all this, all of these, all of these things, man. Every every aspect of, of Black American music has been a response, and, and I would even, I would even say, all Black musics, um, and other art forms, other folks from other cultures, art form, Russia's Russian class. These, this is there. It's a response to something. Mm-hmm. That's happening socially. It's a response. Hip hop was a response. The big band era was a response to something. The 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 quote unquote bebop, or I like to say modernist movement, was a response to something. Oversaturation of swing, swing, swing. Everybody's talking about swing, and and Dizzy and and, and Monk was like, nah. It's too many. It's too many people from outside the culture that's latching on to this, getting paid. We need to. We need to come up with something new now that they might not be able to take. But we also got to look at the image of black folks during the swing era and before, and the image of these dudes coming out and and women coming out doing this modern modernist thing. And what was it a response to? Brothers coming back from from World War II and still getting shitted on. In America, and these young people are like, nah, man, we gonna play. We playing something that's more aggressive. We playing something that's more fast. And I yeah. and 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 Robin D G Kelly says it in in Monk's book. Like, yo, Monk was like, I don't want white people stealing this music. I'm tired of it. Yeah, 
So yeah. it was a social response. If you think about hip hop, Reaganomics took so much music out of the schools. And then even before that, when you talk about the, 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 the black power bands of the late 60s and early 70s, if you want to talk about jazz of the of the of the mid sixties, seventies, we get into this freedom thing. We trying to keep it so that we can have autonomy for our thing. This is what was happening socially. Black Panther Party. We want autonomy. We wanna we wanna own our own, right? Mm -hmm. The evolution of of black thought coincides with the evolution of music. So right now, you got people who came up, who was born in 1980, 1975, who latched on to this jazz, this thing called jazz. But, yo, I had to learn jazz. I I didn't have to learn KRS-One. I came up. So you're going to get a, a Glasper is naturally going to emerge because that merging, a uh, 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 Melanie Charles is going to emerge because that that marriage of 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 hip hop is going to be evident if you're honest and not right. chasing the back. And let me say, have if you have courage, you got to have courage because people might not like what you're doing. They might not. Like Nine it. times out of ten, they won't if it doesn't sound anything like what's happening. That's that's the part, though, Jerome. You got to have courage. You got to have balls because it's scary. It's scary, man. Like, 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 Melanie. I done known you for a very long time, and artistically, I've, I've, I've known you even longer. And I'm gonna tell you something. You, 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 you're always going in a direction that keeps that keep that that keeps people not on. I don't want to say solid ground. That's not that's not cool. But it keeps people that's guessing. Fine. What is she mm-hmm. gonna do next? And 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 yeah. and, it, and it keeps us interesting. Uni is going in that direction. Has gone in that yes, direction as well. And I yes. love that. And this is it's very radical for Uni, especially considering the work that she's she had done at Lincoln Center. Oh my god! It's, it's, I'm I'm so in awe of like where Uni is developing I mean, her sound. I'm like, I'm what? even surprised of the places. It's, that it's crazy. Know. And if you if you think about the if you think about the people who are the face of this music on paper. Yeah. Right, the commercially on on paper. I mean, like Sugar Hill Gang in 1980, man, real hip hop heads wasn't checking for them. Let's right. be mm-hmm. real. Grandmaster Cass was that dude. Melly Mel was that dude. Right, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. And for people who was real hip, a few years later, Roxanne Chate was that. She was yeah. the, she was the shiznit. Let's mm-hmm. just keep it real. And before her, uh, uh. Um, we gonna edit this. <laughs> <laughs> but Ooh, this is getting heated. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't um, know if we gonna edit that, but <laughs> no, 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 no. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. I just had a brain freeze, y'all. My bad. It's okay. But there's, okay, there's, my but, but, but right now. The, the 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 guy who is who is who is sort of at the 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 commercial helm of things he don't even like hip hop he don't respect it so people who want to sell records who want to be down with an institution that you know got money are going to run from that aspect of black culture of black life yeah yeah right so but there's always an alternative to everything. What's the alternative? What's the alternative? Because where's the hope? Where's the silver lining? Truth, legacy. Y'all. <laughs> people, people who people who just being true to to the to the culture. Whether whether you wanna whether you wanna spang a lang, whether you wanna, you know, combine whatever elements, whatever element of of of, of the music. With with whatever other music, with jazz music or or or, or swing music, the tradition of swing music. Mm-hmm. If it's hip hop, a lot of people doing it as a gimmick right now. Yeah, because again, Robert Glasper, man, I mean, he's 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 very successful. So what you gonna get? You gonna get you gonna get some copycats trying to do what he's doing. Yeah. yeah, you know, 
Yeah. And, and that's normal. Um, I feel like historically a lot of copycats were the ones that got famous and the real ones that was really developing the sound kind of got left behind. People always talk about how Miles was, who was, my, who are they saying that Miles took all his stuff from? Miles stole his stuff from. Who well, like com- compositionally, he took a lot of people's oh, writing. Oh yes. Writing wise. Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah. 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 He, absolutely. Yeah. You know, so like we hear stories of that, like it was really an underdog or someone else I was really doing the heavy lifting and someone else got the, you know, and that that's just the unfortunate way of the world. But okay. I'm sorry, I y'all. Shy, now- Shy Rock was the, was, the, was the artist I'm thinking about. Oh, Shy Rock. Oh, okay. You know. Okay. Yes. It's always an alternative. That's all, that's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like whatever's yeah. going on, yeah. there's an alternative to, 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 to whatever that is. And I'm, people, y'all do, do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Do what you got to do. Get get the bag. Yeah. Yo, there's an alternative to everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There is. That's why I love y'all, man. Y'all are, y'all are breath y'all are, y'all are breath of fresh air. We love you too, Jerome. Yeah. You know? Thank you. Too. Thank you, you too. for speaking positivity and uplifting us as women in, in this in this industry. It it means a lot, especially coming from a, a brother, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. thank you for seeing us. Yeah, and thank you for encouraging us to stay on the path. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it's easy to to fall off and and take a look at yourself and be like what am i doing like yes i gotta eat <laughs> it's hard it's hard it's hard and people people you make know? decisions you know they make they make the decisions to do what they what they do and i'm i'm not judgmental y'all we just talking we talking yeah, about exactly. what's yeah, going on we're talking about mm-hmm. who's doing what who's doing this who's doing that and it's mm-hmm. it's it's okay you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's 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 you you do what you do. But again, yeah. there's always there's always an alternative. There's mm-hmm. there's there's always um alternatives to, to everything. And yeah. I'm I I I I wanna be that. You know, you can you carry so much history and and wisdom. Like a now na- I totally understand why you teach <laughs> because the amount of study that you've done outside yeah. of the classroom, because a lot of the things that you speak on are not learned in the classroom. Yeah. But with that said, it's time for chill trivia. Yes. <laughs> are you ready? Some ready or not, passed. here it come. <laughs> some have passed, some have failed. Let's see where we you should are. do the song. We should do the song. What's <laughs> The internet won't let us be great. The internet won't. Nice. All right. Question number one Which jazz drummer is turning 100 this year? Is it A, Buddy Rich, B, Arthur Taylor? Easy question. C, Max Roach, or D, Art Blakey? Max Roach. Ding, 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 (laughs) ding. I had to start out with the easy one, because, you know, everybody everybody be sweating during... I know, you be making them sweat. (laughs) All right. I don't know. I feel like you're probably going to get all these, (laughs) so we'll see. Um, Question number two. Who was Art Blakey's biggest influence in regards to fills and drum solos? Was mm. it A, Max Roach, B, Chick Webb, C, Baby Dodds, or D, Billy Joe Jones? Chick. It was Chick? You're wrong. I think I don't like that question anyway. It damn right, sure right. wasn't Philly. It was Baby Dads. Well, hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. Oh, challenge. Uh oh. Chick Webb. Everybody came to hear him play. Who came before him? And I there's I have recordings. If you listen to Liza. The clouds fall away. You you hear shades of 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 what's to come with Art Blakey. Mm. But then you could also hear that with Baby Dodds. Well, everybody's coming through Baby Dodds. 
I should have said baby doll. Okay, I'll take yeah. the L. You're wrong, bro. <laughs> I'll take the L. <laughs> but I'm sure it's not that black and white. No, I it's see what not. You're it is wrong. not. But I, I mean, that, that, that question, though. I know. Yeah. It's a hard question. What feels? I did ask another drummer on, that was a guest on this podcast that question, and I wanted to ask the same question to another drummer. So I'm definitely taking that L. But that's, 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 that's kind of subjective, to too, though. I wouldn't what? say Philly because Philly... Philly came, he was checking out art. Well, I got that. I learned this from Eric McPherson. Um, That's how I formed the question. Okay. So I don't know. Moving on. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> now we're getting into semantics. But, you know, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you half a point. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, half a point. So that's one and a half. <laughs> <laughs> See, we have fun with your trivia. It's a good time. All right, question number two. What was the name of Max Roach's percussion ensemble? Was it A, the Jazz Messengers? B, Max... <laughs> <laughs> this is a question. Oh, God. Okay, sorry. B, Max Roach plus four. <laughs> C, M Boom. <laughs> or D... Boom room. <laughs> boom boom room? Boom boom room. That's good. M boom. <laughs> Correct. Ooh. I can't even I can't even answer questions. You're right. Ding, ding, I, didn't, ding, ding, I ding. didn't know about that. I'm gonna look that I'm gonna look M that boom. up. Mm. All right, last question. Who Uni's is... one of Uni's um ex bandmates used to play in M Boom. A key, really? A key member. Oh, talking about Warren Smith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, he was. He, he was, was a at, part of, he was he was a part of the sound. Right? He was the sound. The sound of M Boom. Yes. Yes. Mm. Okay. Moving on. Nope. All right. <laughs> Who is Jerome is killing me? Jerome's like next. I'm this is dead. Great. Let's go. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm ready. I'm ready. It's fun. It's a good time. All right. Who is the most sampled drummer? Is it A, Questlove, B, Clyde Stubblefield, C, Tony Williams, or D, Elvin Jones? Clyde. Ding, 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 ding. All right. Woo! Three and a half points for Jerome Jennings. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, I like that. Good time. That was fun. Yeah, we, we, always, we always keep it keep it light and challenging. At the same time. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. It was a nice little kiki. Well, I feel like we, there's so much more we could talk about. Like, we didn't even talk about your albums, your projects. And I know that you're cooking up some music um, and you're getting ready to release some music. So I think it's only fair. Like, we talked about a lot of the problems and the challenges of the institution. I would love for us to do a part two where we, where we brainstorm ideas of what we can do to, like, be a part of the solution the remedy and also i want to dive into your your discography and talk about like where you at creatively right now like what you cooking up like where are you as an artist so i think we need to like just schedule a part two real soon what y'all think i'm with it agree you know i definitely want to get into some of some of the music that 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 i've made and produced and that would be that would be amazing and that I'm about yeah. to, that I'm diving into now and going to release and. Where are you in the process? process? Are you writing still? Are you recording, or are you plan or planning out the rollout? Where are you in the phase? No, I'm writing so much. I'm writing for a documentary movie that has. I'm surprised I don't have bags under my eyes. Um, creating cues for that. Um. I'm working on a a jazz age big band project. Um, I'm working on a, a smaller group project. Um, Chris is going to be involved in. Um, nice. And I'm actually hearing I'm hearing some some things. Just it's I have so much music complete like through the pandemic, and y'all know y'all know the the indie the indie hustle. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. um, I got I get great advice from from my 
my my life partner Naomi, uh, extra. And she tells shout me, out to Doctor X. No yes, doubt. Shout out no to doubt. Naomi mm-hmm. Extra. No doubt. She. We gotta have her on the show yes. too. <laughs> She's mm-hmm. off the chain. We also, we actually have a a project. Um, we've done some shows. It's called the Get Free Collective, mm-hmm. where she gets to spit, and I write music around her her oh. um her poem. But you know, not rushing the process. Um, you know, we get mm-hmm. caught up in producing, producing, producing. Get it out, get it out, get it out quick. I don't want to yeah. be forgotten, eh, that kind of thing. But yeah, you know, I'm so glad. Like in 2021, 2000. 22 i didn't just rush and put some things something out because my last recording solidarity was was 2019 a beautiful album mm-hmm. thank you i appreciate that mm-hmm. and and um you know you want to put something out you want to you want to turn out recordings um but you know in a, in a quick way you know expediently but that's not how art works all the time. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you know, for it to be something that you that you want to come out that you that you're happy with, and that artistically really speaks to where you are. You, it takes time. It takes time, and I'm gonna tell y'all like this next recording. Chris heard some of the stuff. I got some demo things. It's gonna it's gonna be. It's gonna. It's. F- for for me, and I got a feeling, in general, it's gonna be on something else. It's gonna be on another thing. I'm just putting my hat in there. If you need some SP samples, I already talked to you, Mel. You already phasing. know, Mel. Yeah, okay. Mel, right. we were I at think. the bar. You think I was? You think I was? You think I was? <laughs> Yo, I don't know what you coach. No, I wasn't sure which project because Yo, you got a couple different projects. I'm just saying, like I was. Um, I, Yo. I, before I fix my mouth to say anything, I think it through thoroughly. <laughs> me and are like, pick me. <laughs> Yo, hey, hey, Uni. What is that? The 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 um uh, aerophone. The aerophone. Shout out to Roland. Yeah. Man, I'm hearing that too. I just gotta Everyone ask you some questions name. about it. So. Because I, I I have to learn to know its capabilities outside of just sonically what I'm hearing. I don't want to be like to be able to write for it, write something, mm-hmm. and then I you, will or, or, say or just say you put the something way on it. it depends on who is playing it. I am a an alto player. I have the setting I have on it is for alto. Mm. So if a tenor player buys it, they're probably gonna want to set it up like a tenor, so they'll that you can oh. set it up to the key in tenor. Or oh, a soprano, cool. or a clarinet, or a flute, or a trumpet. So there's a lot of things. It depends who's playing it. For me mm-hmm. in particular, I play it like it's an alto. So you mm-hmm. could write it in alto key. Interesting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ooh. Well, you know, guys, I think that it's our time to slowly fade out of this episode, but I think we can all agree that there's so much more here that we want to explore. Um, we thank you, Jerome, for hanging out with your two little sisters <laughs> uh, and for sharing so much information. Like you cited some stuff now that I'm like, okay, well, let me go. I just I found the M Boom album, so I'm gonna go listen to that. Um, and to our listeners, check out Solidarity. It's a really great album. One of my favorite tracks is I Love Your Smile. It's not one of my favorite tracks because I got to sing it with you at Dizzy's, I swear. It's not only <laughs> why, but that's such a classic song. And you I sing I Love Your Smile just makes the most sense. <laughs> oh, she killed it. <laughs> she, 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 was, she just, she did her thing. I tried my best. No, who, remind it. me again, who's singing on the album? Shani. Oh, oh, no, that's no. that's Camille. That's Camille, that's Camille. On your and there's album. there's a video there's a video that, that component to that. Ooh, yeah. So we got to put a link to that so people could check that out and get into it, and then you know we we revisit. We revisit. Um, so we have this little thing that we do, Jay, a little sign off. So what we be doing? I'd be like, I say, um, whatever you do, and then you, Jerome, say, remember to, and then together we say, make jazz true again. 
Are you down? That was the rehearsal. I, I feel like you already got the gig. You already got the gig. Ugh. Remember two. That's what you said. Yeah, I don't already. I don't already jacked up the claps. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta say remember two. Remember two. And then we say make jazz trill again together. Yes. Yes, that's it. All right, all right, bet. <laughs> Thank you again, Jerome, for for chatting with us. We look forward to having you back again. Thank you to our listeners. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you you tell your friends, share the episodes, and um, whatever you do. Remember to me, to me to you. <laughs> Remember to hey man, please, please, please. Oh, hold up, man. Hold up, man. Let, 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 let it go, man. I'm man. You said from man, me to you. Oh my God, where did he get that from? From me, me to you. you. I, I forgot. I like that. I forgot. <laughs> He said it remind it rhymes with ooh. Okay, so okay. <laughs> rewind. Whatever you do, remember to. May Jazz, 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 jazz again. 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 Yay! Yes. <laughs>